Hi, my name is Elsa Dominish, and I'm a researcher at the Institute for Sustainable Futures at the University of Technology, Sydney. Unfortunately, I can't be at the conference in person, but I'm glad to be able to share some of the highlights of the research we undertook with Earthworks earlier this year. One of the key objectives of the research was to understand the projected metal demand under high renewable energy scenarios and the potential to offset this through recycling efficiency or substitution. We looked at 14 metals across three technologies which are key to the energy transition. These include batteries and electric vehicles, particularly focused on lithium ion technologies. We looked at solar PV and wind power, including those with rare earth magnets and those without. We modeled these metals against an energy scenario that limits warming to 1.5 degrees. This scenario was developed by colleagues of mine at UTS, and it ends up with solar PV at about 30% of electricity generation by 2050 and wind a similar amount. In this scenario, the transport system is 100% renewable, and we've calculated battery demand for cars, buses, commercial vehicles, and storage. One of the first things we wanted to understand was the cumulative demand. So how much of each resource would be used up until 2050? We found that cobalt, lithium and nickel, if we don't have recycling, all exceed current reserves, which is the amount of the metal that is currently considered to be economic to mine. If we look at the total resource, that showed that cobalt still exceeds this. If we zoom in on a particular metal, we can understand the impact that recycling and efficiency can have. If we have a high recycling rate, then this would reduce the primary demand for cobalt by nearly half. If we also combine this with new technologies, this would further reduce demand. But new technologies take a long time to come online, so recycling has a bigger impact in the short term. This is true across all the battery metals. So overall, we can say that recycling has the greatest potential to reduce primary demand for these metals. However, the story is slightly different for metals used in solar PV. For example, for silver, there is very little recycling happening from solar panels. And if we increase this, it does slightly reduce demand. But because of the long lifespan of solar panels, shifting towards um, more efficient panels actually has the greatest potential to reduce demand in the short term. So this is not to say recycling is not important, but efficiency has the greatest uh, potential to reduce primary demand for PV metals. We also looked at increases in production to try and understand where mining is likely to ramp up in the short term. In terms of total volumes, Aluminium, copper, manganese and nickel have the largest volumes of demand in their peak years. If we look at that as a share of the levels of current production, then cobalt, lithium and nickel once again emerge as important, but also rare earths have a large increase in production compared to current rates today. When this peak demand happens is different for battery metals compared to solar metals. So for example, we can see lithium on the left, the demand continues to grow throughout the time period. However, for solar, the peak of demand is earlier on. And this is because we have more solar technologies already installed, whereas batteries are comparatively new. So we can see that demand for battery metals will continue to grow throughout the period but for PV metals will slow down. So some of the key findings from the modeling aspect of the research were that there are potential large increases in demand for metals, particularly those that have only been mined in small amounts previously, and where renewable energy is a very large share of demand compared to other uses. So this particularly includes lithium, cobalt and rare earths. These metals are the most likely to see large increases in production and new mines as they are harder to substitute from other uses. When we compare the different technologies, we found that electric vehicles are the main driver of demand for these key metals rather than batteries for stationary storage or other technologies. 
In order to reduce demand, we need a combination of recycling and increased efficiency. However, this won't meet all the demand that is there. There are shifts in technology underway that can help reduce demand, but this won't take effect in the short term as it takes many years for these new technologies to come online. Because of this, it's important that we design our transport and energy systems to minimize battery use through options such as promoting public transport, car sharing, and only using storage when needed in the electricity system. That gives a quick snapshot and I'll now hand back to Pyle to talk through the other aspects of the research. Thank you very much.